Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to another episode of KGL Wednesdays. I'm Hutch is on, and I have some pretty good news for you guys. Unfortunately, there's not very much news this week. However, some big, big tour news got dropped, and that'll pretty much be the focus of today's show. I'm going to be talking about the tour dates that got announced, as well as the tickets, the ticket situation that's going on. And uh, I already got my tickets, so I'll go a little more into that, as well as today's kind of little extra bonus segment. I'm going to be going through what my dream King Gizzard set list would be. So that'll be kind of the fun thing for today, and then I'd love to hear what you guys, what your dream set list would be. I kind of have a few rules for it. Um, I mean, they're just my own made-up rules. You guys can do whatever you would like. But uh, for it, I'm going to limit myself to like 20 songs, and I'm actually going to try to make it flow like a concert. That was my little challenge. So I'll get into that, um, but we'll get to that later. Let's get to the news first on this KGL Wednesdays. <laughs> Tayumi, did you get your tickets for the King Gizzard 2022 World Tour? No. I spent all of my money on Vegemite. Well, that sucks that you blew your chance. Come here, go. Well, on that note, so the news this week, like I said, is very sparse. However, the tour dates did get officially announced. Last week, I mentioned how King Gizzard said they were going to be releasing the tour dates very, very soon. They actually said, I think, a shit ton of them, and they actually did follow through with that, as there was a lot of tour dates announced. There were a few more three-hour set uh, concerts that were announced. Actually, I know there was one in California. I don't know if that one was already previously announced to be a three-hour set, but that one I noticed was, along with the Red Rocks um, three-hour sets that they're also doing. And then they also announced one, I believe it's in Mexico City. I think they, I saw an updated post today, and that is what it said. So I got my tickets today. Uh, from what I've heard, King Gizzard always skips the Pittsburgh area, which is where I reside, so they did not skip them on this tour, so I got my tickets to see them. I'll be seeing them in Pittsburgh. I'll also be seeing them in Columbus, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. So the, uh, the Pittsburgh, Columbus, and Cleveland shows are all in a three-day succession, so that's going to be a crazy-ass three days, but they're all pretty much within driving distance, I mean, from me. Cleveland is like two hours and 45 minutes, then Columbus from that will be like 30 or 45. I, I don't know how far those two are apart, but it's probably not that bad. And then I live like 10 minutes from where the, the Pittsburgh venue is going to be. Uh, actually, I don't think it's 10. I, I, with traffic, I think it might be a little closer to 10, but realistically, it'll probably be about 20. So uh, I'm very excited for that. I had tickets to see them in Philadelphia, which I also mentioned I'm going to be doing. That one's in the fall. I, have, I got my tickets for that show last year, but it got postponed a year, so I'm going to be going to four shows next year, and who knows, maybe I'll go to more, because I was telling my friends this, with Tame Impala, I wasn't super, like, I wasn't, I didn't feel the urge to go to as many shows as I could, because he kind of keeps the set list pretty similar throughout each night, he switches some things up, but I wasn't going to go on a dist long distance, like, tour to go see them multiple times, because, because oh, sorry about that, I wasn't going to spend money to see lots of shows if each show wasn't going to be super different, especially since Tame Impala didn't even come that close to where I live, so I had to go to Texas for that show. But anyway, on that note, I am very excited about going to these shows. Like I said, it'll be my first time seeing King Giz. Uh, some other notable things that I saw about the tour is the, I think it was just the last one. If you have tickets to the Oklahoma show, which let me verify the date is... Wow, I had to do a double take. It's on Halloween, actually, so that's very cool. If you live in Oklahoma, sorry, my phone ran up storage, like, mid-shot there. So, as I was uh, saying, I don't know how much I got out there, but um, if you live in Oklahoma City on Halloween, they are doing a show there, and you can see both the Murlocs and Leah Senior. So that is, like, probably the dream King Gizzard opener experience. Although, I would say Pipe Eye, that would be incredible. Pipe Eye plus the Murlocs. And then Leah Senior there too. You could have like a, you could have three openers. I mean, let's, there's no rule against that. And then Leah Senior, uh, you know, it actually comes into my dream set list thing I was about to mention. Uh, she could also do some of the narration for uh, the Murder of the Universe songs. Uh, just all that would be incredible. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into my set list. I actually have to pull it up because I don't have it memorized. Um, but all right, okay, so. Like, um, I kind of alluded to this earlier, the rules are that I limited it to 20 songs. I was originally going to do 15, but it was too hard. And um, another guideline I wanted to set was I wanted to make it 
so that it's not all just my top 20 favorite King Gizzard songs. I actually wanted it to kind of be songs that I just want to hear live, even if they're not my necessarily my favorite songs, uh, you know, just normally. I, like, there's some I just want to experience. And then uh, I wanted to keep it so that there's not too many, like, unbelievable songs that you just, like, they would never play that. You know what I mean? I wanted to keep it to a few of those that I love, and I would love for them to play them. But I didn't want to kind of crowd it with just like, okay, that'll never happen. I mean, though, though it is my dream set list, but all right. So leading off my concert set list is Head On Pill, which this for me, I think this would be an amazing outro and intro song, but I think this would just be the killer way to start a King Gizzard concert, uh, especially if, I, if I've never been to one and this was my first show that I, I, I'd be blown away. Uh, Head on Pill is my second favorite King Gizzard song. My number one is on this, but we'll get to that. And Head on Pill, that would just be insane. And I love that song. Um, so I just noticed, actually, my the t if I made it into a playlist for my set, it is one hour and 55 minutes long. And I so they mean a little unrealistic with timing. Maybe I would, dr if it was actually real, I'd probably drop a few of the longer songs because I have a few of the, the long ones on here, including Head on Pill. But... Number two, three, four, and five all come from the same album. Uh, I I didn't want to do a ton of, you know, songs from the same album, especially like in succession, but the beginning of Nonagon Infinity with Robot Stop, Big Fig Wasp, Gamma Knife, and People Vultures, I would love to hear all those songs back to back to back to back. That would be incredible. I think start starting a concert with start a concert. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry about the jump cuts guys. My phone, I just have too many videos, I guess, of like Stu McKenzie doing weird stuff. I don't I don't know, but my phone has a lot of storage on it and I film these with my phone. So uh, sorry about that. But as I was saying, I think you could start a concert with Robot Stop, but I think head on pill is like the appetizer, and then head on or robot stop would be like kind of the main start of the concert, you know what I mean? But I love Nonagon, and I think those first four songs would be kick ass as a uh, like as a melody. I, I love the Mind Fuzz melody, but I don't have any songs from Mind Fuzz on this set. But I think hearing that would also be really cool. So up next is Crumbling Castle, which uh, I'm actually gonna make a quick little change right here. Uh, okay. So up next is Crumbling Castle, which Polygon and Wonderland, I've mentioned on this channel before, that is my favorite King Gizzard album. So I would love to hear two songs from that album, which I have Crumbling Castle up first, and then it goes into Deserted Dunes, which I actually think it's kind of interesting. So I have Head on Pill, then Robot Stop, which then it goes into the Nonagon songs, and then it goes to Crumbling Castle. So I kind of have three intro songs kind of in succession if you group them. So then I have Crumbling Castle, then Deserted Dunes. Love those both those songs. I love the entire album, so it's hard picking just two to hear live. But those two they've actually done live a few times, Crumbling Castle especially. So I don't think those are two out of the realm of possibility. Up next, though, is This Thing, which I think I'm only picking this song because of the amazing Chunky Shrapnel video that came out. It was part of, like, the bonus features or something. I love that song now. Well, I mean, I loved it before, but, like, that live version, I just want to be there. Like, it makes me want to be there when I watch that video. Uh, but up next is Intrasport. Oh, I was also going to mention, I really want that Chunky Shrapnel Blu-ray. I don't know if I mentioned that, but please make that a thing, King Gizzard. You guys, I think they've alluded to it. That would just be so amazing with, like, the entire show. Wow. Or the entire, like, performance, uh, the entire album, like, all the music videos. That'd be great. Uh, but then up next, after this thing, has another song by Joey with Intrasport, which I think this song is absolutely incredible. It's the only song off KGLW that came out in 2020 and 2021. It's the only song off those two albums that have not been played live when they did their microtonal tour. So I don't know if there's just an issue with playing it, but I think that song would be insane live. And that would be incredible, especially if I never if they never played it before and I was at a show and they just randomly started, I'd lose my shit. Uh, but up next, I have, I'm making another change. I'm going to go from Intrasport to The River, which... I really, really love this song. Obviously, everyone probably loves it. I think 20 years from now, this will be the song that people will be like, that's their anthem, or that's their like theme song, I guess. Which, there's another song on this set that you could probably also say that for, but I really want to hear The River Live. Just seems like a blast. Uh, especially that, like, I think they did one show where they just played it really, really fast, and I think that sounded really cool as well. But going from The River into another similar sounding song, which I think you could transition well, uh, is Joey's song, uh, sorry, 
Joey's song, Interior People, which I feel, I, the really reason why I'm stumbling a little bit is I'm wondering, would it be better to have Interior People before the river? Because I feel like they'd probably have Joey just do three straight songs rather than have Joey do two, then they switch, and then they have him go back. But I don't know, I, I don't make set lists for a living. But I think Interior People would be amazing. I feel like of all the songs from Butterfly 3000, I've heard that like some of them would be pretty tough to play live. I think Interior People, it would be pretty doable, I feel like, compared to the other ones. Uh, and then we head back into another song that could be considered their anthem, Rattlesnake, especially live. I think this song is just a song that they would, they always do live for a reason because people just get into it. The crowd gets into it. And I think that would be really fun. And then keeping the same kind of sound from Rattlesnake, uh, going into Digital Black. I mean, I know they're not the same, but like, it's not like you're going from a chill song into Digital Black. Uh, but Digital Black off Murder of the Universe is incredible. I know I mentioned I I'm only keeping it to 20 songs. But I would, like, if I was cheating, I would probably throw uh, Welcome to an Altered Future right before that, because that intro song into that, would it's just so epic, and I think that would be really cool, you know? Like, after they play Rattlesnake, when they're, like, chilling, like, down a little bit from playing that song, you could have, like, the Han Tayumi thing play for, like, a minute, I don't know, and then, like, the digital, you know? I love that song. And then another song that I really, really love, in fact, it's my favorite of all time with King Gizzard, Invisible Face, which they've never played this song by itself live. What I mean by that is they've always either played it like right after Evil Death Roll um, or during Evil Death Roll, where it's like kind of its own little mini song. They don't play the entire thing, like where they have the jazz section in the middle of that song. I think that'd be really cool live, but they've never done that one. It's my favorite King Gizzard song, and I'd love to hear it. Uh, but up next, we go a little... Uh, uh, heavier into the hungry wolf of fate which this song might be one of my favorite songs from kg lw in general it's so good i love the dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, you know what i mean it's a great song uh but what i love about it is if you listen to it on spotify and then play if not now then when right after the songs basically transition into it into each other and i think them playing those two songs back to back would be so cool okay Last time I promised that'll happen. I went and I deleted a bunch of apps. All right, we're good. If you listen to The Hungry Wolf of Fate and If Not Now Then When together on Spotify, they kind of transition into each other. Well, they actually do, but it's not like smooth. I feel like I'm sure someone's edited or it is a smooth transition, but I love those two songs so much. Uh, they're one of my, they're probably two of my favorites from both of those albums. And I think that they would transition great. And if you want to hear what the live versions of those songs would kind of sound like if they played them back to back, Check out my video, Odyssey of the Gizverse, on YouTube. It's like a, a video I made where I took a bunch of bootleg songs that King Gizzard put out and made it into my own edited concert that kind of sounds like it's one long concert. So if you're interested in something like that, check it out. I'll have like a link to it or something like that. Um, but I, I worked hard on that and I'm pretty proud of it and I have it on Spotify myself. I downloaded it. I really like that set and it actually has a lot of the songs that are on this on that. So if you're interested, check it out. But Going from those two songs, we go into the last song. Let me make sure. Uh, I've, I've, I've filmed this like five times now because my phone just keeps like shitting itself. Um, the last song before the encore is Hell, which this is my favorite song from Rat's Nest. I think it ends the album perfectly and I think it would end the main part. Like it would end the concert great before they just come back out. But everyone would be like, after the, uh, that song ends, everyone would just be like, oh my God, I'm like so mind blown. And then King Gizzard leaves and they come back. And ideally, with, since it's 20 songs, I didn't actually have this in mind. Ideally, you'd have Leah Sr. coming out and they'd play like uh, Some Context and the Reticent Red Contour, or however you pronounce it. And then Lord of Lightning plays, which is the actual song on my set list. Again, I wanted to keep it at 20. So if magically, or if King Gizzard said, yes, Levi, we'll do your idea, but we're only doing 20 songs, I would have guessed I'd have to just cut those. But Lord of Lightning coming out as the encore would be incredible. Love that song. It's just, it's, I, I like how Hell kind of ends slowly, or I mean, it doesn't end slowly, but kind of fades out. And then Lord of Lightning could fade back in and it would just be great. But now we head into the final two songs of the concert, number 19 being The Bitter Boogie. This song's super chill. And I think it, it really works for kind of like an end of the concert kind of thing when everyone's just kind of like, woo, you know, they're just like, all right, we've been here for a while. This is really awesome. And it just, you could get into it, you know, when you're probably already like kind of fizzled out from the show. And then, and I also think this song would transition very well into my final song of my set, which is Float Along, Fill Your Lungs. I think this song is the perfect outro song. I think you could transition well from Bitter Boogie into it. 
and I love Float Along, Fill Your Lungs, and I love that album, and I love that the first and last songs of those albums are the first and last songs of this set because I just think they open and finish so well. And that would be my King Gizzard set list. So I want you guys to put your set list ideas in the in the bot in the bottom section below, comment section below. Sorry, it's been a long day. If you don't want to do a whole set list, if you just don't feel like it, like what are some songs that you like would love to hear live from King Gizzard, or like what are the main ones you would be like, I need to hear those. Um, so I guess that kind of finishes up this week's episode of KGL Wednesdays. I have some memes on the screen right now. Um, Again, not not too much news this week, but I honestly, I think the first week I did this, there was just like a lot of news, and I think most weeks are just going to be like these last two. It's just going to probably be one major tidbit maybe, or one really juicy thing, and then I might kind of have to stretch a little bit for the other stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next week on KGL Wednesdays.